Hello, and welcome to a special viewer-requested episode of Flyby, presented by the National Model Aviation Museum. I'm your host, Claire, and today I'll be discussing Corda's Wakefield, a rubber-powered free flight model originally built by Dick Corda in the 1930s. The Wakefield event is an international model airplane competition that was started in the UK by Lord Wakefield in 1911, who felt aeromodeling could encourage interest in full-scale aviation. At the original Wakefield event, rubber-powered free-flight models competed for the longest average of three flights and was officiated by the Kite and Model Airplane Association, followed by the Society of Model Aeronautical Engineers. The design guidelines were fairly strict, requiring a weight of more than 8 ounces, not including rubber, a wing area of more than 200 square inches, with the stabilizer being 33% of the wing area, and the width of the fuselage had to be a certain percentage of its length. Now regulated by the Federación Aeronautique Internacional, or FAI, these aircraft are classified as F-1B models, and pilots compete every year at the NATS to achieve the longest average of 7 flights. Every two years, the pilots compete in the World Championship event. At the age of 24 in 1939, Richard Dick Corda had already set two world records with his models, one in Mulvihill Outdoor Stick and the other in Cabin Fuselage Class D. His Class D world record was earned in 1937 with a flight time of over 54 minutes. Corda's Wakefield had a similar design to his Fuselage Class D model. Perhaps the most unusual thing about Corda's model was that the design wasn't unusual or uncommon at all. It was more realistic looking than the other more streamlined designs that were popular in the Wakefield event. A notable design feature of the Corda Wakefield is the high polyhedral wing featuring an undercambered airfoil which helps generate lift. The stabilizer is also fairly large and features a cambered airfoil to improve stability. The most prominent feature of this model was the single blade folding prop. Single blade props move through undisturbed air which generates fewer vibrations and more thrust. The prop also folds back once the power has been expended, which reduces drag during the glide portion of the flight. Although Corda ran into some technical problems, which almost put him out of the competition, he was able to take first place in the 1939 International Wakefield event and set a world record flight of over 43 minutes. Edward S. Booth gave a compelling description of the flight. In Canadian Aviation, he writes, Everyone agreed that Corda's first flight was one of the most remarkable ever recorded. The model had just the right climb, not too slow and long, nor steep and short. After a run of about 60 seconds, which took the model up to about 200 feet, the propeller folded back and the ship went into an exceptionally flat glide. Losing height almost imperceptibly, it drifted toward the bottom end of the golf course, where at an altitude of about 100 feet, it was taken in gently in hand by a riser. 10 minutes or so later, the model had reached a height of possibly 1,500 feet where it circled for minutes on end and directly above the takeoff point, clearly visible against the blue of the sky and thin white clouds. Then it drifted again past the far end of the course, gliding very slowly downward and finally landing after an officially timed duration of 43 minutes and 49 seconds. Miguel's kit and Corda's design and thousands were built. Corda Wakefields are still an extremely popular model today. Corda continued to fly and compete with his model until it was deemed unusable, was retired, and eventually destroyed. The Corda Wakefield in our collection was built by Dick Corda himself in the early to mid-1990s. It should be a fairly accurate reproduction of his original Wakefield. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Flyby. As always, please leave your questions, ideas, and suggestions in the comments section. Follow us on social media for updates on current projects, new donations, and behind-the-scenes historical air modeling information. We always appreciate your feedback. If you notice any discrepancies in the information provided or you have additional information, please email us at museum at modelaircraft.org.